Hey, I'm Marcus. And I'm Nick. We are Working Class Nerds. Cue the intro. That's right. We are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, July 16th, 2020, and you can find this that he finally made time in his schedule to join us on our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, and Stitcher. You can find me on Twitch streaming all the games at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814, and you can find the both of us on Twitter. I am at MarcusB814. And I am at Nick Vern, that's N-I-C-K-V-E-R-N. In this week's episode, we're talking about our experiences with D&D and Star Wars Legion. So joining us this week is my longtime friend, Joey Feta. Who has Scott. blown us off numerous times to come on the show. Well, <laughs> he's a busy guy. He's got 17,000 degrees in nursing, so he's busy in school all the time. Um, he's, <laughs> But besides the nursing degrees, Feta is also a fantastic uh, Dungeons & Dragons DM. And is the facilitator of all of my various Star Wars Legion adventures that I've been having the past few weeks. So, hey, welcome to the show. And what have you been up to? Welcome. Thanks for finally having me. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Whoa, whoa, no, no, whoa, no, no, whoa, no, 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 no. You whoa, can't whoa. call that bullshit right away because that is some deep, deep Bayou bullshit. Okay. <laughs> You've got your boots all the way up to your knees because that ain't true. We've asked you numerous times, and I remember the last time we were all set and ready for you to come on, and what did you do? You ignored the text. You ignored the phone call. You failed. Not us. (laughs) Well, I finally had an opening in my schedule. (laughs) So now that we've shamed you, tell us about your past two weeks and what you have been doing. The past couple of weeks, I've been working at the COVID Palace Hartford Hospital as a registered nurse. I've been playing a lot of frisbee golf, and obviously the majority of my time is being taken up by my various hobbies related to D&D, Star Wars Legion, and tabletop miniature games, essentially. Do you play um, Do you play digital video games? Digital video games? Yes, but not as often. Um, sure. Recently, so... I just re-downloaded Star Wars Battlefront 2, the EA one that everyone hates. No, and not I know us, why. Dude. We've been jamming on that game. Seriously? Yeah, the, yeah. our last episode we had, um, uh, well, no, two episodes ago we were just on the Star Wars Battlefront podcast. Oh, beautiful! Talking about it, it's. I think it got a whole ba- bunch of. Basically, what we figured out during that episode was that Battlefront Two got a whole bunch of bad press right in the beginning for all the loot box stuff, but they pretty much fixed it right away, or at least within you know a month or two, and then they just been adding more and more content to the game since, and now it's pretty epic. Yeah, all their uh, Rogue One content came out, and I was loving it. Scarif is so beautiful. Scarif is gorgeous. Scarif's awesome. I like that whole that whole movie. I enjoyed a whole lot. That's probably one of my favorites of the of the sort of Disney acquisition movies. You know. Oh, by but, far. But anywho, besides Battlefront, any other oh, games? So- Go ahead, Marcus. No, what I was going to say is so one of the co-hosts of uh, the greater guild aie their aie podcast mccullough she um only plays tabletop games i think she just recently started playing final fantasy 14 but every week she tells us about like what D campaign she's on they were playing a star wars D game i forget what it's called star wars 5e or was it the no. actual R- no. star wars rpg no i will tell you um it's uh something so you uh, think i'm stalling stalling what it's anyways not, that's from a it's from a movie i don't remember which one i think it was uh it might be frozen or something the character it like is a... just musing about the definition of stalling and the joke is because they're literally stalling for time oh i was God. trying to i was trying to do that while you're looking up which which star wars well, no no I'm, I'm i'm fine but anyways i'll find it in a second um what would you say your favorite is? Is do you enjoy being a D and D DM, or do you like the Star Wars Legion? Because 
we're going to talk about it more, but isn't it two person only? It's not like a four player. Yeah, exactly. It's it's one against one, and that's something I recently got into. So that's been taking more of my time just because it's new and exciting. Meanwhile, I've been playing D and D since probably three and a half edition. Wow. Yeah. Since the Pathfinder days. Um, it's called Age of the Rebellion or um, a Edge of the Empire. Edge of Empire. I know a little bit about Edge of Empire. Okay, that's that. You know, that's that's what I, that's like a true like D and T D and D and D clone. I was yep. just curious if you ever played it. Um, I think I tried to play it once, but it could, it like kind of fell apart as most things I try and do do. <laughs> well, you it's just hard said to find do-do. a party. Oh, God. Well, I was I was just gonna say. So that's the hardest part about D and D for me and games like that because for me between work married life kids it's really hard for me to go somewhere in person to play a game yeah right where if you did like roll 20 D D, like i could totally do that one day a week uh-huh. but but then i feel like you're almost losing in the experience by doing it that way mm-hmm. yeah so once COVID 19 hit like obviously my party kind of dissolved the one that i was currently working with um, but I did a whole Discord server once they added video for COVID, and I set up webcams to get my actual table because I invest so much of my time in the actual terrain and that kind of more concrete experience with D&D, and it seemed to work out pretty good. I haven't used Roll20 in a formal capacity. I've played around with it a little bit, and it's just a huge investment of time on the DM's part to get everything set up. Sure, to get all the environments in there and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I guess well, yeah. but but at the same time, I guess if you set up like the webcam for the table and you're like over the top view of like a city, we'll call it, mm-hmm. and you're and you live stream that on Discord and you're doing it, it's essentially the same as Roll Twenty. The only difference of Roll Twenty is that you're putting all of your rolls into like its own like sheet, so they're like D Twenty's doing the work for you on that side of it. Okay. I mean, I enjoyed the tactile sensation of like being able to roll your dice though cuz I, I know for me, you can you can like kind of do it and like get better results or at least maybe I just like to pretend and fake it that I'm getting better results. <laughs> but um like if I for example when I was playing D&D more often, I'd like to take my D20 and like have the 20 start facing up and then try to get it to roll over only once when I roll it. You know what I mean? So try I, to load your dice I mean, I'm trying to. It didn't work well, but the uh, <laughs> I rolled poorly all the time. But still, you're trying to, you know, to have that a, a little bit of control in the in the chaos. Whereas if you're, you know, just clicking a button on D20, it's like true randomization. So it's not really you have a lot less control. I feel like you know, yeah, or you can't least, really shoot hot with an RNG. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> you can't you can't get on a roll, so to speak. But. So what else have you been up to? Anything, Joy? Working? Um, table yeah, topping. not working, tabletopping, trying to figure out this whole new environment we call post-pandemic. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's kind of been putting a damper on a lot of things I like to do because I'm trying to not expose other individuals to potential illness. So. Yeah. Yeah, you had you had the Rona, too. I me did. And, me and Joy I both I came did. down with it. Did How was your... Were, was your experience like next? No, I think I had it worse. Not trying to say that Vern had any like less of a issue with COVID nineteen, but I was on my ass for three weeks. Dude, All right, so can so I? So was so, I. I almost I almost went to the hospital. It was ugly. So oh. I had to like self prone on my couch. Yeah, I did too, dude. I, okay, I had to maybe you just t- underplayed it and tried to be cool because I thought I, I was like actually no, dead. No, I I legitimately almost went to the hospital several times. So, I called my so, primary a bunch. But go ahead, Marcus. Um, I was gonna say, so Feta, when it, my daughter found out Nick got the virus, she called him every day, every day. Wow! And this one day, she called, FaceTimed him, and we were all there at dinner. And she's like, "Oh, Nick, how you doing?" And you could see it in his eyes; his eyes were like melting off of his face. And he like for like three minutes, he was like, "I'm doing good, Julia. Thank you so much." But you could see it in his eyes; they were like bleeding from the inside out, oh, not literally, God. but you could like tell he was just like. 
okay, as soon as I'm off this call, I'm going to cough and die. <laughs> all right, everybody. And I was like, all right, say bye, Julia. Feel better. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. And, and I make fun of them. Him. For the record, yeah. I did. Yep. <laughs> cough for a lot after. But Any, Anyway, next. So what have you been up to? So uh, somebody opened up a can of worms last episode, and I've been playing a whole bunch of Elder Scrolls Online this week. Um, what day did we start, Marcus? Was that Monday? Yeah. So Monday night, Marcus is like, dude, go download ESO. We're playing tonight. Like, fuck you. Go download it. I'm like, all right, fine. It's so $20. Go, it's $20. Like, I know your bitch ass has $20. Like, okay. Oh, you didn't have it prior to this? No, I well no, I didn't. I didn't have the ESO prior to this because I yeah I was like half afraid of of what it would unleash, but uh, <laughs> but I I also didn't know if I was gonna like an MMO, but I'm liking this a lot. So, um, downloaded it Monday. I played through like the tutorial and stuff, and maybe one quest afterwards. Um, and then hopped online with Marcus and Ben and Katarina, and we just like leveled went through like um just to kill a bunch of ads essentially um in this one area yeah it was like a heavy trash area where there was a ton of ads and there was a ton of xp i right. think i went one up well, up one or two levels yeah, yeah. i, I would think i went up to yeah two or three something like that but I, I started off lower than you so we got like a lot of xp so anyways then the next day i played for like an hour or something and then today i played for like three hours and i just was just jamming <laughs> what level are you now uh like 11 or 12 oh shit yeah but i was like level three the other day what a grind it's um yeah so it feels like an mmo but it also almost doesn't it doesn't that's why i like it i don't so like i don't really i'm gathering that i don't really like the mmo e parts but i also it's like just enough regular rpg or like bethesda game like all the story stuff feels like that you know, where it's like, oh, go find this quest, and it's, like, pretty fleshed out, and there's all this, like, lore background tied into everything. You're talking about Daedric princes and, and sort of demigods, the tri- you know, the the um, Dark Elf Vivid. Tribunal and stuff like that are all involved. So you've got this, like, rich lore that I like from the RPGs. It's not just like, hey, this is a bomb. Go defuse the bomb. You know what I mean? Like... I don't know. I think when it's more complicated, the quests that might be in reality just like a fetch quest, when it's tied into lore and things, it feels a lot more in depth. So I kind of, it's easier to get immersed in it. You know, it doesn't feel so like cheap, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And no, it does a lot. And like last night for me, I I played and I quested, but I was in like the Discord with Cat and Pen. It was actually really fun. You know what I mean? Because I was going around doing my own thing and they were doing theirs, but it was nice just to hang out with people and chat with them. But I do, I do agree with you that the quests feel more full than like the SOTOR quest. It's like, okay, go defuse three bombs and then walk back five miles. Right. And tell me you defused them and then I'm going to send you on another quest. So for that, it's sweet for me now with it nick and you'll understand because you played so much skyrim and the only way you could get around was that compass at the top right for me it was like i needed a mini map like that was everything and now that i have it it's actually made it so much better for me what did you make for a character i forget oh so let me tell you exactly um wait one more thing before i move on to my character though so normally i don't really like an mmo as much but in especially with the the length of sort of questing how long and how far you have to go for quests in sotor but for this i like like having players in the like all the cities and stuff make them feel so much more fleshed out than in skyrim whereas it would be all npcs you know so you can have the your npcs but then you know walking around but then you also have a bunch of players so it makes cities feel more realistic you know and- oh yeah so like it's it's like you're not going into like a ghost town where there's right. just NPCs. You see people moving around in like frantic ways, and it's like, holy cow, this is a real city. Right. This is pers- a person. Yeah. So you have people walking. You have people, you know, running on on horses or bears or all kinds of crazy mounts and stuff like that. Or you have crazy pets and stuff. It just feels a lot more fleshed out, which I appreciate. But then the quests feel like a normal sort of Bethesda ERPG, you know. So I I definitely I'm enjoying it a lot. It's got almost like the best of both worlds. 
so far, especially because you can go in first person, which I definitely prefer. Uh, for combat, I, pro- I prefer, yeah, I definitely prefer the first person when I'm just like doing quests. When I get into combat, I like to pop into third person, but for like just walking through and like in looking around at everything, I definitely like the the first person better. Wow. I think like the graphics look better in first person. I mean, it's like, it's essentially, it's the same, but like, I just like that perspective better because you can look at all the little details of like a bookcase or, or different, I don't know. I, I notice more in first person than I do in third, if that makes sense. Especially like look trying to find like items to pick up and stuff. But anywho, um, so what I actually went with, and if you don't know for Elder Scrolls Online, there's three different like uh, alliances, which are clusters of, of races. Um, and that this, I think that's relevant for PVP, not too much in the story. But uh, so I went with the Ebonheart Pact, which is Nords, Argonians, and Dark Elves. So, and I went with a Dark Elf. And for like a, a class, I went with a Magic of Focus Templar. So in English, that means like I'm basically a magic based knight. So I use like Daedric summoning of weapons to do attacks, which are so it's like magic weapons that I pull up and then attack you with. And then also like all these sun based magic spells to like fight people. So I have like a, a burning like beam of sunlight is one of my attacks or and then also you have so you have like all these these magical things that you can do but then also have like a, a physical weapon so i chose magical staves as my weapon of choice so <laughs> between the magic weapons like the danger weapon that's for my class is a spear so i'm essentially like hawking mag- like magical spears at you and then also like throwing sun f- beams at you and then also because of the magical staff i'm like casting fireballs at you too so my guy is just like hucking a bunch of shit at you all the time. It's all kinds of crazy lights and colors all over the place. And it's really fun to play so far. When I get into combat, it just looks like a Dragon Ball Z movie. <laughs> it's just energy all over the place. That's funny. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> um, so obviously, also, uh, I played Legion on Tuesday night with Joey, which was pretty epic. But we're going to talk about that later in the show. So for now, Marcus, how's it going? And what have you been up to? Holy shit. Holy shit, we beat Revan. Like finally. Dude, like there's a clip on my Twitch of that Kogus made and it's 30 seconds of pure joy. Mm-hmm. So Feta, um do you know who Darth Revan is? Yes. Okay. So there's in Sotor there's um the hard mode boss and my team Death Star Troopers has been working on this one boss for 4 months. Two yeah. hours a week, Jeez. one boss. Revan. Eight mm-hmm. eight people have to work together to beat this one boss. And, I mean, fuck. I, I, I don't even know hmm. the feel, the, like, the feelings of it. And, like, when you, yeah, the, the emotion and. You know, um, Doc had his, he recorded his stream. He wasn't live. But, like, I, I that pure, you know when you work for so hard for something for so long? And, like, you win. Like, it, you're not crying because that's not uh, my point is it was just so, my joy was so much that I didn't even know what to do. Like, I lost it. I, I went fucking bananas because that chapter is finally over. And then I, now we, I never have to go back. And even if I do go back with another team or something, like I've already beaten it. So it's not like a thorn in my ass anymore. Right. Yeah. And it's not that undone thing on your to-do list or whatever. And I just wanted to take a minute to thank everybody on the team. Um, because without any of you, you know, Kat and Keone healing, Slayer being like the the helping hand that this team needed to get over the top and really like helping us grow. And then, you know, myself as a tank, I mean, all I did was try to stay positive through these four months because like this shit broke our heart. Like it's a soul crusher every week you make, there's like that one pull where you get, the boss to 40% or you get to the second floor and then that's like, you only do that once in the night and then the night's over and you're like all that for 
like 2% progression. And you're just like, Oh my God. And then our, then our crushing DPS is doc, Ven, um, Annie and muscle man. And this week, muscle man was out, um, when we got the win, but he already has the clear, uh, quef he filled in. So thank you. But, you know, thanks everybody on test our troopers. Cause that I think out of a lot of the fights that I've done and I've cleared, I think that one is my biggest ever because, you know, Bronte's on hard mode was huge for us in the beginning, but I think this one, like the team was solidified. We all worked so hard to get to this point. And honestly, I've never seen mechanics in a game that sucks so bad as this fight. I was just like, I'm, I, I have a weird feeling like when we go to do the next fights, it's just going to be easier because the mechanics aren't going to be as insane as this thing was. Right. So anyways, so then as Nick alluded to earlier, um, I, so I can't, I can't rope Nick into playing a game if I don't play it myself. <laughs> right. So, um, I started playing, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, and it was, I created a tank, and I'm like a reptile guy. I look, and An I Argonian, got how dare you? What I, I don't know what it's called. It's a reptile. Argonian. Yeah, it's, and I swim really fast. Yeah. But anyways, so um, the game is beautiful. So the one thing I notice about this game versus the other MMOs is that this game, they actually put some real time into the world building. Where in a lot of MMOs, like the character may have some like detail, but like the world always suffers because there's so much world where this one is just beautiful everywhere you go. I mean, a couple like like some of the rocks don't look fantastic, but if you look at the general landscape, it's beautiful. Yeah, I appreciate how there's like crazy mushrooms all over the place too which i know fits for the world they're supposed to be but like the detail on those is crazy there's all different hues that look exotic but still like you can see like oh that's a mushroom you know what i mean it doesn't look yeah. cartoonish but like they've at got all. purple purples and reds and oranges all at the same in different sections of the mushroom but it looks still like oh yeah that's a mushroom you know what i mean yeah it must you know and I don't know, I guess I should run a benchmark test on it just to see what it's doing to my computer compared to, you know, a SOTOR or another of the MMOs because it's beautiful. There's no question that that game is beautiful. Yeah. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the UI because I think as I'm not used to only having access to five, uh, five buttons, mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like I'm overwhelmed in it and, and I would say the tutorial system isn't great. And maybe I missed something or I probably disabled it. Cause I'm like, oh, I'm, a, I'm the best player ever. I don't need a tutorial. Um, probably. but I feel I probably did. Um, but I feel like the, like, I'm kind of like, I'm earning new skill points, but there's nowhere like in game to tell me what to pick. And I know they, you say you can pick what you want, but in like SOTOR, if you pick a tank class, it gives you a tank class, but then it gives you different things you can pick. Like, and you kind of can read through on like the items you want to pick, but in this game, it doesn't really do that. And maybe it will once I hit level 10. Um, cause right now I think I'm level nine. So I have to step up my shit. Cause Nick is, um, levels of, 12. of me now. Yep. And yeah, I'm screwed. The other, th the last thing for my week is my Elgato Wave 3 mic came in. So I ordered, when they announced this mic and people started reviewing it or like streamers and stuff started reviewing it, I went right to Elgato's website and I ordered it right away. It didn't, it didn't say it was out of stock. It didn't say it was in stock. I just ordered it. So then um, at the same time, I got my 4K capture card and the capture card came in within like two days. Because my first capture card, I didn't realize, was a 1080p capture card. Okay. And so I have a brand new 1080p capture card here that I can't use on my computer because I, my my monitors are 4K and I render in 4K. Oh, and, so everything on your computer is 4K. Correct. So you need that 4K pass-through, which the 1080p one doesn't do it. Gee, so anyways, I wonder who might want would want to use that unless you're gonna. Well, I'm actually, Coralie is buying it off me. Damn Sorry. it! But yeah, but you don't need it. You don't stream. Not yet. Um, 
Oh, well, then newsflash, everybody. Nick is going to become a streamer. Exactly. Twitch.tv slash at Nick Burr. Right. So this Wave 3 mic is awesome. It has its own software. So you essentially can break down individual sounds and control each one. So now I can control Discord, what the stream hears versus what I hear and completely separate the two which is huge. So if I'm, if I like want to turn down discord all the way, so then everybody can't hear it. That's fantastic. Cause they don't need to hear all the time. They can hear it like at a low volume, but I always want to be at a higher volume than discord. And I never could do that before where it came out. Right. Right. And now it just gives me a lot more options so far. The mic is really good. They say I sound really clear on it. Um, the only unfortunate thing was, is I actually had to move the mic's location. Mm-hmm. Um, so my Yeti was above my head and now the boom arm is underneath my monitor that comes out. So like I lose a little corner of the monitor, but it seems to be working good. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. Elgato wave three, highly recommend it to people. Um, I don't use it for podcasting, so it's just for streaming and the thing's pretty sweet. So a quick couple questions. Um, one, so you're saying, so the mic comes with software built into it that lets you separate like the Discord audio versus your audio versus what the stream hears? Mm-hmm. And is that a software package, or is that something you're physically doing on the mic? No, it's a software package. So that, I would say, is the only um, downside to this mic, and it's, I'm glad you brought that up, uh-huh. is because yesterday I just wanted to play, and I didn't have the software open, and because I didn't have the software open, the mic and nothing would work. Like, nobody oh, okay. could hear me. Oh, so. Okay. So I'm almost like it's nice to have the software, but if I just want to jam and play games, yeah, I almost have to like I got to open up the software and make sure the settings are right and then go into it and then adjust from there. Yeah. So it's an extra step for when I'm streaming. It's fantastic. But when I'm just trying to jam and play games, it's just an extra step that I don't actually need. All right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, How and my second question was, how much uh, is this mic MSRP? I think it's a hundred and eighty bucks. Okay, um, that's not bad though, because the Blue Yeti's like one twenty anyway, or something like that, right? Uh, Let's see, Blue. I, I don't. Yeti. I don't know how much the Blue yeah. Yeti is. Buck Listen, 20. I l- one twenty nine right, so ninety nine. Yeah, so I personally, I loved, um, I loved the Yeti. Um, I just needed the software. So, oh, it says Wave Three out of stock now. I went to the site. Well, um, wah, wah. yep. So I can't even tell you, I think it's 180 bucks, but newsflash, if you, um, if you buy the wave three from Corsair when it's mm-hmm. in stock and you sign up for their bullshit email list, you get 10%. So I actually paid 151 35 for it. So sweet or something. Yeah, and I know that's more than 10%, but somehow I feel like it was on special. Anyways, <laughs> in SOTOR news, next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, they're coming back with a live stream. So a few of us have started to talk about making a bingo card for it. <laughs> okay. So to, to say what's coming. So, you know, on the bingo card, like, they're going to say the story's coming in the fall. The swoop race is coming back. That's a great question. PvP changes. Legacy tokens, the veto map rule, whatever it is that we're going to we're going to make our own bingo cards just to kind of have our own like little side game through it. Matt eating Swedish fish. Yes. Stuff like that. (laughs) That's going to be on there. So there's it's a funny time that they're doing a live stream and it could be just coincidence, but they just released PvP changes Uh um, to the game and the rank changes. This is straight from Kogus. The rank changes are great. They're finally fixing ranked PvP, which is great. I'm happy for them. But in the in the next swoop of it, they're ruining unranked. They're making wins required for win, uh, unranked PvP. So in order to get the daily and the weekly, it requires wins, which I think is really messed up because unranked is supposed to be like practice town. Right? 
I don't, I don't know how to label. You know, nobody should be mad at you because you didn't win a match in unranked PvP. Right. I think that's a really bad move, and it creates more toxicity that is already in a PvP game. Because we all know PvP creates toxicity. Just play Call of Duty back in Modern Warfare 2. Um, <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, check out next week. Um, because... Uh, It'll it'll be interesting to hear what they have to say. Oh, we got. Oh, I just thought of another one for the bingo card. Uh, COVID. How many times are they going to say COVID? Ooh, um, I say over oh, under oh, four. Uh, and um, COVID beard. That could be one. Are there if they they're are growing COVID beards? Growing COVID beards? Yeah. yeah wait yes. Minute. Yeah, COVID beards. Anyway, oh, you know what? That must be a thing for the non-healthcare people. Yeah. Oh, because you guys can't have beards. Well, well, we you, both do. You can, but yeah, we both do. But uh, you just need special accommodations if you have a beard, so it's like frowned upon. But you both have one. Yeah, so we're both basically giving our hospitals the middle finger and saying, "Buy me the more expensive protection." Fuck off. I'm it's like dude. we're pregnant women. Yeah, you. you I have, know when you're, same you're legally re- required to to accommodate for us. Oh, because when um, when Carrie had her uh, when we had the babies. They made me put on this like neck, this neck beard cover thing. Yep. And that's why I almost passed out because like I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and you know, I that was all in your head, right? I, whatever. We're, yeah, we're, dude, not, no, we're not. No, doing no, no. This. no, I can't because that's not that's not actually what made me feel lightheaded. Yeah. Like the suction. Never mind. It was, all I, oh, all I say is blood. Cesarean? Did you? Yeah. Have yeah. Yeah. The, the smell yeah, so, that made you pass out. I promise. No, actually, it was the bucket that was full of like the blood. The full that of was, her inside. That, that was that was on the wrong side of the fence. We'll say that. And I was watching it bubble up and a moo, moo, moo. Sorry, sorry, everybody listening brew. to the show. Uh, moo. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I'm sorry, podcast world, because that just went to shit. Anyways, in AIE news, <laughs> August 1st through August 9th um, is our summer of love. And don't forget, uh, August 2nd is our Remembrance Day. We all get together in all the MMO games, and we all celebrate and talk about all the friends, guildies um, that we've lost in the last year and the years before. Um, And through the week of August 1st through August 9th, there will be something going on every day in all of the MMOs, just fun events. So uh, check out AIE-Guild.org for the calendar events for uh summer of love and it, not, what'd you say i was gonna say what does this sound like to you hey it sounds like if all this sounds fun to you go to aie-guild.org jump in the discord and ask for a guild invite whether or not you play star wars or public or elder schools online or call of duty <laughs> or any of the other games that we play we would love to have you we want you yes you Joe driving down the highway, listening to this right now, in your blue sedan. We're talking about you and why aren't you in AIE yet? You've been listening to every all seventy eight episodes now. Get in here, let's go. Anyways, that's my rant. Join AIE. We're fun people. Do you have to go? I would love to go. <laughs> so we'll be right back. Jeez, Nick, hurry up! We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So today we're going to be talking about Star Wars Legion with a side of D&D. Now, Star Wars Legion, I think Nick and I saw this when we were at PAX East. Yep. And there was a ton of people playing. And like the guy's like, oh, just hang out and watch us play. And we were like, how long does it take? And he's like, oh, a couple hours. But like I can show you the ropes in like an half hour, 40 minutes. And Nick and I were like... Nah, we're just going to go play some video games. Yeah. So anyway, so that's the basis of it. Feta, how would you describe to me and everybody listening what Star Wars Legion is? And um, can you explain the premise of it? Yeah, sure. So Star Wars Legion is a tabletop miniatures game from Fantasy Flight Games. Um, it's on right on the front of the box. It says um, an epic miniatures game in a galaxy far, far away. So obviously they're coining that whole Star Wars thing. Essentially, it's one versus one 
you both have an army that's one of the factions present in the movies throughout the different sagas and you essentially want to it usually just turns into a slugfest but there are objectives that you want to capture whether that be intercepting transmissions sabotaging moisture vaporators um collecting supply crates or infiltrating the other person's battle lines um there is kind of a lot to it there's a lot of moving parts but in a general sense it's a small war right on the tabletop set in the star wars universe so obviously i love it i think the the short version would be like not that joyce is the long version but like sort of to wrap your head around what we're talking about you've got a big th- it's supposed to be i think uh What's it? What's the uh, regulation size? Three by three by six. Yeah, the so, play the play table. Yeah, so it's three a three by six, by six table. You're Wait, sitting... you need three feet by six feet to play the game. Oh, big yeah. table. Yeah, yeah, it's a giant table. So yeah, see, I could never do it. So well, Joey has a whole dedicated D and D table that works perfect. But... Oh, so then that's fantastic. Yeah. Yep. So props a... to your girlfriend, wife, friend lady friend whatever it is because she allows that that's fantastic yeah joey has a whole so his apartment is is like a townhouse it's three floors so the first floor is like their bedroom and some storage and then their second floor is their living room and kitchen and then the top floor is just like joey's playground (laughs) yeah it's an open loft essentially it's an open loft and we have like dedicated areas because i live in an old mill so there's big rafters up in it and we separate each of the sections of the room into like two offices one for beer one for games and like a spare bedroom if anybody decides to sleep here yeah so he's got a bed up there two separate offices one for Corey, his girlfriend and one for him a bathroom with a shower and a d a whole D &D table set up slash star wars legion set up and then also a video game section and And a a a smearing off ice a big smearing off (laughs) ice right at the top of the stairs so i yeah i did do that so the uh, one of the first times I came over to play, Joey had Joey had iced me. Uh, if you don't, you gotta know what icing is. But Joey iced me um, at when we played paintball like the week prior with a giant thirty-two ounce. So I had to get him back with two. So I went upstairs before he did and just dropped one like a like a mine in Call of Duty um, right at the top. I got of the fu- I got fucking claymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got him there, and then later when we were playing the game, uh, his the, the way the table was set up, it was right outside the bathroom door. So I put one right on the middle of our of the playing table, which was epic. So he came out of the bathroom right to to a nice. But anyways, back to the description of the game. So I would say if for if you're looking for like a quick description, it's more or less like chess with different objectives, but instead of chess pieces, it's um. Darth Vader. Star Wars characters, yeah, Darth Vader and Luke and 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 that those types of characters. Yeah, that's usually how I explain. It. I explain it like chess because each of the different units has their own special rules and what they can do. Right. So it's a lot of strategy behind it, but I think it's an absolute ton of fun. Yes. So yeah, each card does different things, and it involves a lot of dice rolling of different dice colors, so that have like different probabilities for chance. You've got red dice are the highest chance to hit something. Or defend against something. Black dice are sort of in the middle, and then the white dice are the weakest. But um, with the with, do, does the game come with the dice, yeah. or do you have to buy your own dice? No, yes. it it is it has specially made dice um, with like he said increasing tiers of greater probability. Right. So for example, like Darth Vader's lightsaber is super super strong. So when you roll an attack, it's six red dice, so six of the highest probability dice. Versus stormtroopers are really bad at shooting, so each stormtrooper only has one white dice. So I'm going to defend the stormtroopers. You try to shoot something with those ma- those helmets on. Yeah, that's fair. The they don't have the they don't have they, completely. They don't have aim assist. Not. Nah. <laughs> that's true. And the so, recoil on a laser blaster has got to be absurd. That is also true. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy recoil. But um yeah, I, I think without like getting too into the weeds of explaining the game, that's more or less what we're working with. And so you have you know, each there's there's different rounds as well. So you set up the game, there's different setups you can have. Um everyone places their, their sort of pieces. So 
I think actually, you think you should explain the role. We should explain the roles a little bit. There's different wait, ro- wait, wait, roles wait, wait, for wait. troops. I, I have a lot here. of questions. Yeah, because I'm trying to figure out here. So you have a three by six game field. So Nick, if you're the Empire and Joey is the Rebel Alliance, Rebel Alliance, they you guys each set up your own guys the way you want it, or is there a book to say? Yeah, you need to be here. So. Here, let me set the scene for you here. Do you have that three by six battlefield? You then place terrain, whether it be kind of an emulation of the Forest Moon of Endor, Tatooine, uh, Felucia, Geonosis. Like it, it, you can go as far as you want, wherever you want. I want to make it Scarif Ford, but that's kind of like later down the ropes. Mm-hmm. Anyway, you set that up, you put the terrain. And then you go over to the other side, and then you draft pick the game you're going to play. You have deployments, objectives, and conditions. So you select the deployment zone, which can be just lined up across from each other, Revolutionary War style. You can have one that's called Disarray, so that's the four corners, but you're playing in opposite ones. And then if you buy different expansion packs, they come with additional deployment zones. That kind of just change up how you play and the strategy. So you may be setting up like all to one side and then the other army is spread out along the edges of the board to try and kind of flank and come in on a central objective. So after you do that draft pick, you get your deployment zones and then you set up your objectives. So do you, do you kind of understand the deployment zones? That's where you initially set up the pieces. Or the the parts of each army. Does that make sense a little bit, Marcus? Yeah, I'm just sorry. I'm being quiet because I'm just thinking in my head about it. No, I know um, it's kind of hard to describe f- without having the table there. Right. So no, no, no. I yeah. I understand it because of like playing D and D and playing other board games. Um, you know, I I understand um it, how how it's you know how it's set up. And I just, oh, okay, so here we go. I'm actually looking at one. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at one of Star Wars Legion or City Map. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at it. So I see, so essentially I'm looking at this three foot by six foot thing. And you're saying like top left, top left corner, the Rebel Alliance starts in the bottom right corner. The Empire starts and you essentially, excuse me. You were essentially taking over the base, You're, I mean, the map, and you guys have to be strategic on, you know, you can't put an Imperial walk. If you put an Imperial walker against the, the rebel infantry, obviously the AT-AT's walker's going to just, yeah, the ATAT is going to just destroy them. Yep. Right. So essentially, as the other player, as they see the ATAT walking towards them, you have to change your tactic to get them the hell out of there and go the other way. Precisely. Mm-hmm. Okay. How long does now? How long does it take a match to last, and how do you determine the winner? So that really depends on the IQ levels of who's playing and how often <laughs> you have to go back to the rule book for each situation. Um. So I think the games that Vern and I have played lasted, wow, like after setup, like when we were officially like, all right, let's go first round. Probably two hours. Two hours. Yeah, I'd say two hours. Um, It can be easily shortened to, I think the estimate on Fantasy Flight, um, their website is 90 minutes to two hours. I think that sounds about right. If you don't, if there's like minimal rule checking, I mean, if there's like a normal amount of rule checking, that sounds about right. I think if we never have to look at the rule book, we just go, go, go. We could probably do it in like an hour. But yeah. ten minutes. If you think there's six rounds, so ten minutes per round is pretty doable. But you got to be really moving for each one, you know. Yeah, and you have to resolve a lot of stuff. So like the first rounds typically go faster, and the last rounds go faster. Rounds probably three, four, and five takes so long. Yeah, because a lot now at that point there's like rules and and pieces are dying and you've got to deal with suppression tokens and taking them on and off and aiming and and different things like that. That you sort of deal with like the more complicated mechanics as in the middle rounds there. Yeah, and but. to kind of go back to your original question, Marcus, um, how you determine the winner, it's based off of the objective that you select when you do that draft to set up. So you pick that deployment zone and then you play, pick an objective. And when you pick that objective, it really determines how you're going to play the actual game. 
um, whether it be you have to get in base contact with a specific piece of terrain or you have to go pick up a supply crate or you have to kind of king of the hill occupy a space for x amount of time or i think sure. one of them is also like just get to the other end of the map essentially yeah yep so that like break breaking the line yeah breakthrough is this a lot like uh imperial assault it all it's very similar to imperial assault because you can on play a smaller Star- scale okay because you can play imperial assault on steam digitally yeah you can play legion on tabletop simulator too people have put in uh mods for it wow that's, that's pretty cool, cool. Yeah, it's intense. I don't know how these people have time to do stuff like that, but I thank them for doing it. <laughs> well, for me, I'm looking at so I'm right now on Steam's website and I'm looking at the Star Wars uh, Imperial Assault. Like I could do, like because you can play uh, the core game, Heart of the Empire, Jabba's Realm, Return to Hoth, like Twin Shadows. You can play all these games and. Um, you know, you. When you're- that might like that would be awesome to be able for me to be able to play with you guys digitally because you know I may not be able to play in, in person. person, right? Yeah, that's a that's a good option to explore. Tabletop simulator, yeah, yeah. yeah plus, it costs me much less money because I don't have to buy all the expansions. <laughs> that's well, true too. Th- wait, wait, or paint. But them. there's some. Well, wait a minute. What? They don't come painted? They nope. do not come painted. I have to custom paint and put together each miniature that is on my tabletop. So Which is a lot. A cust- yeah, so a customer a customer of mine, he doesn't play board games, but he creates World War II reenactments. Mm-hmm. And he that's exactly what he does. He paints each individual troop trooper and sets it up on a board. And then once it's done, he sells the board. Oh, he makes like dioramas. I don't know what it's called. You're basically looking at a miniature scale of like Normandy. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Like yep. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. He had he had one guy that was like chopped in half because he was it was like he was blown up and he was in the sand or like the well I don't know if it was Normandy but he was completely blown up and it showed like a crater in the ground it was wild and yeah. all of his all of his guys were pan painted so wait. So like when you get like uh what's a what's a iconic thing? Oh like oh, a Tatooine hut. Tatooine but hut. You had, yeah, you had to paint that so it looks like it's been beat up by sand. So yeah, the so the terrain they actually you have to make. don't yeah, so you a lot of people three D print most of their terrain. So if you can imagine that, like you three D print a hut from Tatooine and then you have to paint it and use different texture materials and things to make it look like it's on the base like it's on tattooing right or you can make it out of foam like joey did yeah but all the um characters come all gray and sometimes in pieces so joey will take them glue them together and then paint them you can obviously play with them unpainted but who wants to do that if you have the ability to paint them right and you don't want all gray pieces yeah um, no, a hundred percent because yeah, because you you're not playing um uh you're not playing Star Wars to play with gray characters. No, nah, you're playing to play with Star Wars characters. Like you want those bright white stormtroopers against the muddy rebels. Like mm-hmm. that's what you want. It helps yeah, with the whole immersion of the experience. Like, I don't think it would be nearly as fun if I didn't have all the supplies I've wasted hours of my life making. <laughs> Definitely not. It's That's probably the best part. Like, if it was Darth Vader and he was just all gray, like, having, like, the bright, lead, bright red lightsaber with, like, his all-black outfit, you know what I mean? In each Joey does an awesome job where, like, each button is even, like, painted the right color, red and gray and things like that. It's pretty... Herbal. I bet it's... Good. Is it really relaxing for you, like, after, like, a hard day? If you have a shitty day at work and you come back and you, you know, paint Boba Fett's jetpack, I, I can't imagine that's not, like, It's my mega favorite relaxed. thing to do. Yeah, I, I can imagine it's very... Thing. Yeah, I can imagine it's very, like, therapeutic for you. It can get stressful, especially... It was, like, when... I, so I started this... And I got decent at painting miniatures because of all the experience I've had painting miniatures for D&D. 
Mm -hmm. And with D&D, there's very little reference. So you'll have the monster's manual and kind of like not to get too deep into that, but you'll have some sort of reference on what these monsters are supposed to look like. Like goblins are green. That's about all you got. Right. Star Wars, there's nine fucking movies that depict them perfectly and you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't copy it like imagine if i just had blue stormtroopers right that's just wrong whack yeah but you can yeah you but i think he did a good job of painting them all white and then have like little flecks of like dirt around the edges and things like that with them yeah at least for like especially with boba fett that you just did recently i thought the details on him were incredible Boba Fett is the best miniature I've ever painted to date. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like, to date. It is absolutely perfect. That's because he's so iconic, and he's a... Fa- like, when you think Star Wars, like, if if I called you randomly and said, Star Wars, one, first thing that pops into your mind, I get... I'm betting there's a one in five chance that you're going to say Boba Fett. Yeah, people will say Luke Skywalker, Stormtrooper, Darth Vader, or Boba Fett. Like that's it. Maybe Chewbacca, or Princess Leia. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, she, they're her definitely. Her sculpt up isn't there. that good. I don't really want to buy it and paint hers because it's like, it's like Commander Leia from when she takes over the Rebel. Oh, versus... so she's she's not in like the white outfit. No, she's not in the Hoth. She's in the Hoth outfit. Not even the Hoth outfit. It's like Return of the Jedi outfit. Ooh, that's dope. I mean, not that Return of the Jedi outfit. That'd be fucking sick but we're talking the later one. Oh. <laughs> not Jabba's palace yeah not not slave no Leia. i didn't say this yeah i didn't say slave Leia. yeah her See, on her on endor when she's like leading troops i'll tell you man that's awesome see i'm i'm watching the tutorial on how to play this game yeah right now on steam uh in the tabletop simulator i'm watching them play it and there's a lot involved in this game there's so many moving pieces that's why it takes us so long because we uh, i collectively i think despite all the time i've spent like being around the game pieces and setting everything up there's so much to the game i've only played three real games where i was serious about it Mm -hmm. instead of just teaching someone how to play and the strategies that i've learned are nil compared to some of the videos i watch online of tournament play Oh, I can only imagine tournament play. That's crazy. What I, what but I, it's go, go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Nick. No, no, go ahead. What I was going to say is one of the things I really appreciate is all of the sort of abilities or, or different things that characters can do are like perfectly fitting to their in Star Wars universe characters. Like one of Hans, for example, his uh, ability is called Uncanny Luck 3. So. A lot of times, let me just explain a mechanic real quick. Backtrack. So when you're, you say you want to attack a piece, right? So stormtroopers are shooting at Han Solo, right? For example, stormtroopers have to roll their attack dice, and then you get however many hits or, or non-hits, and then say they hit him three times on the on their dice. Now Han has to defend with his defense dice and has to roll three defense dice to see if he blocks all three of them, or you know, if if all three shots just don't hit him, essentially. So. For him, one of his abilities is called Uncanny Luck. So while he's defending, you can re-roll up to three of your defense dice. So say I roll my three defense dice and none of them block it, and then I roll three. That means Han can roll three more and try and block those shots again, and then he won't get hit. So it's simu- it's a game mechanic to simulate his Uncanny Luck that he just like doesn't get hit all the time with these shots, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, like, And obviously there are she- lots of other things like that, but just game mechanics that sort of fit well with the character if that makes sense yeah going back to that han solo example in the game that Vern and i played on tuesday i just stood dead out in the open with han solo and went up against his atst so the two the bipedal walker Mm -hmm. and he went guns blazing, tried to hit me with everything he possibly could, and Han Solo did not even get a scratch. Yep. <laughs> I shot him with all of my weapons, and none of them hit him <laughs> because of that. That's funny. And that's kind of what I was going to ask you guys is it must get more enjoyable to play as you both know the rules and the mechanics behind it because – 
it's it's got to feel good because you know I'm sure I'm watching this game right now. Okay, I can only imagine how many things you need to learn to be able to play this game without stopping. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, is like, Nick, once you're in a place where you know the game and like you only have one or two questions during it versus like maybe, you know, and I'm saying now I don't know the the competence of you and knowing all of it right now. Yep. But once you know it, the, you guys are going to crush games because you're just going to sit down and start playing. There's going to be no discussion on. You know, Anything unless there's a question. Well, again, unless or... there's a questionable rule, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he was safe at first. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. You know what I mean? Right. Same mm-hmm. thing. No, I shot Darth Vader in his face, <laughs> and his lightsaber couldn't have blocked that shit. Well, let's look. Okay, move on. But the more you play, the more you guys will be able just to play the game, not focus on rules. Yeah. Right. And that's definitely true. I think that's why some of our games are getting quicker. But as we're also adding more pieces in, that means... So, like, for example, last on Tuesday, that was the first time I had used Boba Fett. So I had to, like, look up all of his cards ahead of time and, like, read through everything and get, get familiarized with how his attack mechanics work and things like that. But it's it's definitely true where... I think it's a lot easier to... Once you play one game... I feel like the second game is dramatically easier. Like it's you get probably eighty five percent of of what's going on. Like after playing one game, is that fair to say, Joey? Oh yeah, totally. I, you might even be able to get almost a hundred percent of the mechanics, and like just have to remember things. Like right, like not taking your suppression the token token or the obje- like the upgrade that you have. Right. So that's true. I. For me, I would say, you know, not playing this before, I would say it would probably take me, you know, two or three matches to really figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, the first one, it's all lesson. Then the second one, it's like partial lesson because you remember some of the core mechanics. But then it's really going to take you another one or another two to really remember don't you remember doing this? Oh shit. I, I, I have a lucky card or whatever it may be mm-hmm. to be able to do that extra thing. That could be you winning or losing in a game. Yeah. And all of the board games have those mechanics like uh mice and mystics. We played that game a lot and that had some different mechanics in it as well with like chances, because again, you would put, pop a card and all you need is that one card to be really awesome and it changes the whole tone of the game. Right. I think that's fair to say here as well. All you need is like some good rolls of the dice to like I think I did that. What what which character did I like wipe? Oh, one of your um, You got rid of my rebel veterans, so that would be the Hoth troopers that I have. Yeah. Yep. I Blasted shot them with... the entire unit in one hit. <laughs> with the ATSD. Fan- it was absurd. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's fantastic. So one of the here's an example. So the ATSD, one of its um, bonuses is uh, actually. Can I look at that right now? The upgrade. Are you talking about General Wise? Yes. So General. So yeah, one of the upgrades that you can have on the ATSD is uh, you get General Weiss in there. So General Weiss lets you um, attack twice. So, but the ATSD has more, you can get more than one weapon on it. So you have its main gun, which is two reds, two blacks and two white dice. And you, so six dice total, that's its main gun. And then it's side gun that I had was basically one, one at one. So that's nine dice total just for one regular attack. Now, and if you activate general Weiss, that's a bonus card. You can do that whole thing twice. So that's 18 dice that I could roll to try and hit Joey. And I did, and I wiped out a whole squad. I didn't hit him with 19 or 18, I should say. But I hit him with enough that he didn't block. Yeah, um, you only had to hit me with five. Right. <laughs> if I, hit, I hit him with five. Uh, I think I had hit like 11 hits or something. And you had blocked like four or something. Yeah. No, so, to- but, toast. Yeah. But that right there is luck of the roll. Right. And, and that just shows that, you know, one game set or move can change the whole outlook of the final game. Right. 
Yeah. Immediately when that happened, do you know what I did? I went all guns toward that ATST. <laughs> right. It's like, okay, that thing needs to die immediately. It was like, I'm going to go find cover and just start flinging stuff right at that walker. <laughs> right. But another interesting mechanic I don't think we've touched upon yet. So um, each army has to be 800 points total, right? So each like unit or upgrade costs points. So for example, the ATSD is 195 points. So basically a quarter of the total points for your army goes to that one thing, if that makes sense. So obviously the ATSD is a really, really good card or a really, really good piece of, of your army to have. So, but it costs it, so it, much. It costs a lot. That's twenty five percent of your army without adding any upgrades to it. Granted, the upgrades are only like ten or five, five or ten points each. So I think not. Nah, the but, uh, auxiliary weapons and the ATST can be upwards of thirty five. Well, wow. how do you earn points? So how do you, do you just earn start with eight hundred, and you anything you choose. To, so imagine it's like a buy system. It's like we're gonna play Star Wars Legion. We each get eight hundred bucks. And, and you we buy, buy the you... different units, and then we buy upgrades for them, not right. exceeding 800. Oh. That's, That's so a when balancing you it, mechanic. Yeah. Yeah. So when you buy the core game, what do you get for pieces when you buy the core game? Yeah. So uh, the core set, there's two different core sets based on kind of which saga you want to go to or which part of the saga. Um, there's the Clone Wars core set, and then there's the uh, original number one core set, which is what I purchased. Um, to start with that comes with a, two commanders so each army needs at least one commander um, it comes with four core units two for each faction and then it also comes with a support unit uh, for the empire it's the z the 74z speeder bikes and for the rebels it's an atrt walker which is basically just like an exoskeleton tiny little thing that you, has a front mounted gun Yep. Um, and that is very clearly not an 800 point army. That'll only get you to about 450 to 500. Um, so in order to play a full game, you do need to buy expansions. And that's one of the things that kind of turned me off of this game originally, because it's a pretty big investment up front. But there's a game mode built into Star Wars Legion called Skirmish, which uses half the size of the table. So only three by three. And you can play with 500 point armies. That's essentially so people can get into it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I think competitively, 800 points is the cap for each army. Yeah. And so you don't have to play like that. Like, obviously, if you're just at your house or whatever. A lot of so people you... just play Skirmish, which is that 500 point, which is the core set. Right. The, um, so now the uh, expansion... You know, so if I wanted to buy the rebel troops and stormtroopers, how many troopers come in a set? Uh, for expansions, it's typically one. Um, so I, to, let's kind of re-roll this a little bit. Going back to mechanics and this whole idea of army building, that 800 points, um, there are different types of units. You'll have a commander, core unit, operative, special forces, heavy, support. Um, so those are all different pieces. So if we're going to continue with that kind of comparison to chess, it would be like your knights, your rooks, your king, and your queen. And then pawns, obviously. So and then your, pawns. Your, your core is like your pawns. So like the stormtroopers would be pawns or core units. And yep. then on the flip side, just regular rebel troops are core units. So you have all those different ones that have different abilities, different numbers of minis, and kind of just that contains that whole one unit. Right. So like, a, for example, a one core stormtrooper unit is normally five stormtroopers, and then you can upgrade it to have a six stormtrooper, or you can change it to have uh, one of the stormtroopers be um, a heavy weapon specialist. That would be like an upgraded unit. But it, to add, So it's like, to answer your question a little more directly one of those would be five well like one core like just troop unit would be five and then you can upgrade it to six but normally if you buy like an expansion if i wanted to buy chewbacca for example is an operative so that's like one individual that's badass that goes and, and infiltrates you know the lines or something so that's just one figurine though so you can also get luke skywalker as an operative and he's got different statistics 
different stats and, and, and what attacks and things like that compared to the commander version of him who's not going to be up on the front lines if that makes sense it does yeah if if you want like a better understanding and for anybody who's listening um there are resources online um one called the tabletop admiral for star wars legion and then another one that just recently came out called legion hq by the fifth trooper and those are essentially list building tools which give you every possible combination of unit and upgrade cards that you can use and you can piecemeal everything together to fit your play style and what you think would be beneficial um and then are there are limitations on to the number of units you can have like you can't have three atsts like you can't just have three walkers rolling up on these kids right you have requirements you got to have a commander a certain number of core units so it's three. like an actual arm oh three yeah three core units yep see that's <laughs> So essentially, in order to really get into this, you're going to be spending some money. Oh, yeah. You're going you're gonna to have to. It's a significant investment in not only money, but time as well, especially if you're going to paint these things. Which, as we've said, you kind of have to paint them. Yeah, yeah, I don't recommend not doing it. You it's can even definitely... um, like there are commissioned mini painters. So if you have limited faith in your own abilities to paint something you can pay some dude to like me to just sit in their basement and paint these things <laughs> yeah but i guess that to me now it's like if you're going to invest the time and effort excuse me into it you might as well you might as well just do it okay so i'm looking at it now but so. if if you think about it, that's also another investment because you have to buy paints and brushes and like X Y Z, all this materials to kind of make it what it sh- should look like in your mind. But you can mm-hmm. definitely play this game just straight out of the box. Like there is no issue with doing that, and it's still a very fun experience to learn the mechanic, and then kind of grow with the game as you enjoy it more. Well, you get General Grievous. That's the Clone Wars set, which has been, I have purchased that two months ago. And because of COVID, the manufacturer has been so backed up, I still do not have it. 39 unpainted and highly detailed miniatures. 39? 39. That's, that's wow, two that's... half armies. Right. Oh, whoa. Half armies? Yeah, because that's the that only gets you to like 500 point armies as opposed to 800. Right. Oh my god. Oh, see the the regular Star Wars Legion comes with 33. Mm-hmm. So you actually get more in the Clone Wars. Right. That's cuz you have more droids. Wow. That makes sense. Oh, so here's the Star Wars Legion core paint set. Wow, it's $50. Yeah, you don't need that. I'm not sponsored by Fantasy Flight. You don't need that shit. Well, no, I was just I'm just looking at it. Well, so you can okay, use 50 so... cent craft paints at Walmart. Like, you're good. Well, no, no, no. I hear you, but I bet, I'm willing to bet this core paint set is authentic colors. Yeah. And because they're specific miniature paints, the density of the pigment is so much better. Right. And I'm not saying that you have to buy these because I'm sure you can find these, this high quality paint somewhere else. But, wow. It's a huge investment. And then if you don't, so, so the moral of this story for me is if you have somebody or some, a few people you can play with, then it's completely worth it to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. But in my own kind of circumstance, the way I enticed people to kind of get into the game is to have everything painted and looking awesome so that it's so much more engaging and they're more likely to come back because it feels like you're, in the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. That's why I like going over there all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll fuss some friends with Joey anyway, so I'd come and hang out regardless, but it's a very good excuse to like come over and, and do something, you know? Well, and how many things can you say in your life that you do for two hours that doesn't involve a phone? Not a lot. Not a lot. Or a screen. Not, e- not even something. work. Like, everybody's work, especially due to COVID-19, everybody's behind a screen all day, typically, unless you work in a trade, you know? Right. And even then, sometimes blueprints are still digital, you know? 100%. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I do understand. So, wow, this game is, sounds awesome. Now, Marcus, you I, gotta you gotta just tell the wife to take care of the kids for a couple hours and come on down here. Well, I will. You know, it's just it's not so, so like that's the thing is I work so much. So then when I do come home, it's like almost like a small break for her and I get to hang out with my kids. So if I plan it out and say, look at, Hey, next Tuesday, I I won't be home. Then like I can plan. It's almost like my life is planned when it comes <laughs> that, to this. That's stuff. just adulthood, dude. Like that's yeah. rest in peace, like free time. <laughs> yeah. So I guess, so for me, my last question is, what do you like about Star Wars Legion more than you like D&D? And what do you like about D&D better than Star Wars Legion? That's a fantastic question. So okay, Moscow. For me, <laughs> <laughs> for me, the big draw of Star Wars Legion is that nostalgia. So you're right back into the universe. And I'm a big collector. I like to collect pretty much anything like whether it be cups or decks of cards or things so with legion i can collect different units that are all set in different parts from the movie um so we've been talking about basically the core set the rebel troopers and stormtroopers darth vader xyz Mm -hmm. but then you can also get shore troopers from rogue one you can get hoth troopers and snow troopers um and then even down to the clone wars like they just dropped the i don't know the specific name but the droid tank like you can buy that um wow yeah so you can just collect these different pieces and they give you advantages in game and then they just look so awesome setting up on your shelf yeah yeah i wow so wow i like that kind of concrete aspect uh, and collecting with star wars but when you're playing the game there's a lot of rules there's a lot of steps and a lot of like technicalities um, that are very, very right there in the rule book. And then D&D is the exact opposite. No matter how kind of tactile you want to make that experience, there's still so much room for creativity, not only from the DM, but also your players. And that's kind of creating your own story. Meanwhile, I feel like in Star Wars, we're trying to reenact scenes from the movie more often than not. Yeah, or if if not reenacting scenes, then you're sort of taking traits that those characters have in the movies and like trying to keep the what's happens like along those ca- character traits. You know what I mean? Like, I want Vader to choke somebody. You know what I mean? Or like, you know, throw, not just throw his lightsaber. Like, I want him to force choke somebody because that's Vader. You know what I mean? Well, and I'm just looking. Look at um. So I'm on the website. Just the maps. So you got your desert junkyard map. Desert Ruins, Hoth game map, Sullust game map, Jakku game map, map, mapped, sorry. And it, it just goes on and on. My God. I'm I'm looking at all these expansions and I'm just like, holy shit. There's so much to it and so much more on the way. Like COVID slowed a lot of things down, but in the ropes, there's Anakin Skywalker from i believe he's from like attack of the clones that's his sculpt but he comes in as a commander so Mm -hmm. maybe it'll be revenge of the sith i hope so but i hope it's revenge of the sith too yeah um you can get orson uh director orson krennic yep Yep. like what like yeah they came out with death death troopers are sold out death troopers have been sold out like since they came out and then another really cool thing about Star Wars Legion and Fantasy Flight is they bring in all sorts of things that aren't just from the movies. Like Star Wars Battlefront 2. We were just talking about that. You can get Iden Versio. And yeah, they just Later dropped up, Inferno the Squad. Inferno Squad. Mm-hmm. Uh, or or Nick and my favorite, not really, is Bosk. Bosk. <laughs> Bosk is overpowered too. <laughs> yeah, well, he's overpowered in Battlefront 2. Okay? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> All right, so the what else? Galactic Republic. Oh my god. Like literally, you need to work like 30 hours of OT every week just to buy all these. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're expensive, but I don't really want to talk about it. So well, Yeah, that's cuz your girlfriend is sitting right there. And... No, nah, she just went downstairs actually, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, but, but wanna... yeah, not nah, each expansion, like if you're talking a core unit or a special forces unit, anything with multiple miniatures, 
you're talking 25 to 30 bucks for that one unit. If you're getting a heavy, 40 to 50 bucks. Like the ATST, which you have to have if you're playing a Star Wars game, you have to have an Imperial Walker. That right there is 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. And that's $50. Also dollars. It, it, yeah. it, of course. Like it, I'd pay $100 for it, but that's not really <laughs> what we're talking about here. Right. No, dude, the AT, ATRT, which was what the Clone Wars, like, rode on top of yeah the walker yeah it's 30 bucks 30 bucks right or you buy it in the core set which costs you 75 bucks on amazon um and you'll get all those miniatures so what? you can get a crashed escape pod battlefield expansion what is this that's, yeah, that's... the one that comes with r2d2 r2d2 oh my god so you essentially can play a new hope yeah, oh yeah, you totally can. Crash the escape pod and then you kinda travel into the city um to try and escape the Empire, you know? And then and then you realize the Empire is fighting with the uh with the rebel troops in, in exactly. Tatooine. Oh my god. This is um so I've just been oh, separatist expansions. Tell me you can get Count Dooku. Yep. Oh my god, Count you can Dooku get Count Commander. Dooku. So like see this yeah. is oh wait a minute they also okay, just Cad released Bane. darth maul as an operative uh, no cad bane bro like a pre-order like 14.95 i would buy it just for the character yeah cad bane is so dope wow this is what well, it comes pre-painted no it doesn't uh, no they all oh, this come. one's painted this no one's that's painted. just that's just the picture online that's oh, that I shit see. comes pre-painted yeah, yeah. does oh, not yeah, come pre-painted and you can take come. off the hat you can take off the hat. Yep. Anyway. That's cool. Well, I'm blown away. For me, I wish, like, if I could, I know it's not the same, but for me, like, I could see myself playing this if I could play it digitally. Yeah. And I know it's can. not the same. Yeah. This would, this would be my jam. It's really 100%. cool. I like the board game aspect of it. I'm really old school, and my favorite thing is straight up just being with people, not even over Discord, because the technical technological advances we have like bring people together, but there's nothing like sitting around a table all focused on one thing, trying to have a good time. Like To me, there's nothing better on this planet than that. Sure. So I'm going to circle back to my original questions. What is something that Legion that you like about D and D more than Legion? The creativity, the bar none, the creativity, and like the expanse of options you have, um, being able to role play your own character. So, kind of like it, Star Wars Legion is more structured, and D and D has its rules, but if you come up with something like you can disregard those rules as long as your DM will allow it. Oftentimes I will, if it's that epic and it fits your character, you know, like just that Mm -hmm. limitless potential for writing a story and experiencing it with other people. I understand that. I think um, to answer your question, Marcus, I kind of agree with Joey about the creativity versus structure. I think Joey did a good job of answering both those questions. That's I pretty much, I don't mean to be lame, but I agree pretty precisely. D and D, you can make your own adventure really, and in you know with Legion, you're sort of recreating adventures that you know and love already. I think that's a good and, way to summarize it. And you have specific objectives in Legion. Like there's a way to right. win. There right. is no possible way to win Dungeons and Dragons. You can beat the big bad evil guy, but there's going to be another one. You know, right. and there's, there's going to be untold adventure traveling and just being there in that alternate world that you've created collectively in your minds. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Interesting. Interesting. They're both great games, though. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working, Working Class, Class Nerds. Nerds.